They are fearless, passionate, determined, making advances in their fields that could transform our world. Tonight, the Academy of Medicine, Engineering, and Science of Texas honors four groundbreaking researchers. These are the recipients of the 2014 Edith and Peter O'Donnell Awards. Richard K. Bruick, Medicine. Anyone who has ever fallen into a swimming pool knows how quickly the body senses a lack of oxygen. Individual cells react much the same way. At UT Southwestern Medical Center, Dr. Richard Bruick has focused a great deal of his research over the past 10 years, looking for the triggers that activate when cells are starved for oxygen. We've been able to identify some key uh, proteins that act as sensors within the cell that allow cells in our body to recognize what's going on uh, in their environment. The trouble begins when these sensors have a breakdown in communication. This failure to process information can lead to disease. If cells that are involved in sensing iron and oxygen become damaged, uh, for example, that can uh, change the body's ability to respond. Understanding how these proteins work could contribute to a number of medical treatments. This is being pursued now by a number of pharmaceutical companies for, for treating anemia that is observed in, in patients with, for example, chronic kidney disease. Richard's success at finding the proper pathway to help in the treatment of anemia led him and his collaborator, Dr. Kevin Gardner, to focus on finding a druggable protein to aid in the treatment of cancer, another disease characterized by breakdowns in oxygen sensing. This turned out to be a much bigger challenge. The initial screens that were done to try to find drugs by uh, many individuals in the field were unsuccessful. And what Dr. Bruick did was to come up with a new approach to screen for drugs. At the time, I think it was kind of a crazy idea with respect to how most of the field were viewing this pathway. And we thought we saw an opportunity that we could exploit. He's not a guy who's going to give up. And it was exactly that stick to itness that he exploited to find a drug that, in fact, could hit that undruggable target. Richard's tenacity has paid off. Thanks in part to his access to the university's high throughput screening lab, he's identified an impressive number of drug targets and compounds that are all currently being tested in the hopes of treating kidney disease and kidney cancers. Most scientists would consider themselves successful if they identified a single compound that might be useful in the clinic. In Dr. Brooks' case, he's identified three. We really uh, have some, some hopes that, that what we're doing is going to be useful to, to cancer patients and patients with anemia. And it'll be exciting to see in, in you know, what other disease context that, that perhaps some of the tools that we've built to manipulate these, these pathways will be useful. Thomas M. Truscott, Engineering. Thomas Truscott hopes to change the way we fight diseases. His work has led to a discovery of highly concentrated proteins that could lead to high dosage injectable therapeutics that could be delivered at home. Clear differences between the monomer and the clustered state. At the Cockrell School of Engineering at the University of Texas at Austin, Thomas is studying how self-assembled protein nanoparticles behave in the laboratory and in the body. Protein molecules are some of the most favorable new prospects for drugs that treat a wide range of ailments, from allergies to cancer. They can be tailored so that they're highly specific and so very few side effects. But there are some major engineering challenges. Engineers and scientists have tried to produce drugs at higher concentrations so that a patient could self-inject the drugs at home but proteins in high concentration formulations form aggregates that could endanger patients. One of the biggest hurdles they're, they're facing is how to get those, that large amount of protein into a small volume. When it comes to these tiny protein clusters, Thomas and his colleagues, Jennifer Maynard and Keith Johnston, have adapted an if you can't beat them, join them philosophy. We want the proteins to form the kinds of clusters that will enable delivery to the body 
and also be reversible so that when the proteins are in the body, the, the drug can still dissolve and become effective. If they can have a system that dissolves much faster, much better, it can be taken by a simple subcutaneous injection, that would be really an improvement for the quality of life of our patients. We want to revolutionize medicine. It's got the potential to be groundbreaking, and I think that's the space that you want to be in. Essentially extract this parameter from all of that time-dependent data. Thomas's mathematical models were developed in the classroom, and their predictions for proteins explored at the Texas Advanced Computing Center. The supercomputers at TAC also help Thomas solve equations that model how solvents behave near the protein molecules, which is important for predicting the fate of proteins in the lab and in the body. Thomas has been honored with the prestigious Alan Colburn Award that recognizes the top chemical engineers under 35 years old. Now at just 40, he's chair of UT's chemical engineering department. All the problems he's addressing are problems that will have an impact to our society. He's really in the forefront of the field. At some point we're going to be solving this problem in a way that it makes an impact, hopefully in a way that's improving the quality of life, uh, making the planet a better place. Zifeng Ren, science. Between our gasoline-powered cars, our incandescent light bulbs, and our constantly running thermostats, the United States has become the most wasteful country in the world, using only 39% of the energy it produces. In his lab at the University of Houston, Dr. Zifeng Ren is not only aware of this growing problem, but is making huge strides in the effort to change those statistics. My uh, whole research right now is uh, almost focused on how to uh, make the energy conversion systems more efficient, how to make solar energy more efficient, less pollution. Dr. Ren and his team have been focusing on thermoelectric materials and their remarkable ability to convert heat into energy. Using new creative methods, Dr. Ren has revolutionized the field, in some cases, successfully finding 40% increases in thermoelectric efficiencies over previous records. He looked into the simplest method using a bore milling machine and created the same results. Because of that, he made the material commercial because of the low cost. I very much try to think things outside the box, that's for sure. I don't think just one thing, what's related, what's the next step. By finding a way to create much more efficient thermoelectric materials at a lower cost, Dr. Ren's team has opened the door for development of new energy-saving devices. If we use thermoelectric, we can convert some of the heat as, into electricity and then feed back to your car control system. So then you can uh, improve your gas mileage. Dr. Ren is also applying his materials expertise to medicine through the use of nanotechnology. His team has successfully developed a nanosensor that could monitor and regulate medication for transplant patients, allowing them to know exactly when they need another dosage. So then you reduce a lot of consumption of the uh, medicine, of the drugs. That could be huge, could be change a lot of people's uh, life. With significant contributions in five different scientific fields, Dr. Ren's talents are far-reaching. He's already co-founded three different high-tech companies based on his innovations in carbon nanotechnology, solar energy, and thermoelectrics. And at each turn, he continues to seek ways he can make the biggest impact. I always look, look out and new opportunities. If there's anything new coming up, and if I feel that my experience can make some kind of difference, I start to, to, to do it. James D. Walker, Technology Innovation. The events he explores are destructive. And over, in a blink of an eye, there's little left to examine, making it a challenge to fully understand what happened. At the Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio, James Walker's work in impact physics has far-reaching implications for space exploration and defense. Well, impact physics is the study of what happens when things collide from low speeds to high speeds, how they deform and how they break. We try to understand what happens in those, the high pressures, the high rates, and 
By understanding, we hope to be able to produce better protection systems or do better risk analysis. James uses a three-pronged approach to research, experimentation, simulation, and modeling. His expertise became vital in the wake of the Space Shuttle Columbia accident in 2003. The Columbia's lost. There are no survivors. Just two days after the loss of the Space Shuttle, NASA called on James and his colleagues to help determine the cause. Using a large gas gun, his team simulated foam strikes on the leading edge of the shuttle's wing. That is what was struck during ascent, and a hole was put in the leading edge, which led to the, the heating during re-entry, and then finally the melting of the aluminum wing and the, and the uh, destruction of the vehicle on re-entry and the loss of the crew. NASA soon enlisted James's help again to help the shuttle programs return to space. Millions of computations were performed for different possible things striking from different angles, different speeds, different points in the ascent as the shuttle goes up to better understand what is the risk in flying the shuttle so that then during flight at least people understood the risks and they were willing to sign off that they were as low as reasonably possible. And then the projectile is driven by uh, high pressure gases. Today, the International Space Station is safer because of a technique James helped develop that validated shields protecting the space station from flying debris and particles. James has also created models that describe how projectiles penetrate armor. The models have led to improved armor for soldiers and military vehicles and better protection against improvised explosive devices, or IEDs. We're very proud of what, what James has been able to accomplish and, and uh, you can see that he's worked on a wide variety of things. It's not just one central thing, but he's worked on many different things during his career. In a career that has spanned 25 years, James continues to solve problems of international importance with life-saving implications. The reason we're doing the kind of engineering we do is for safer environments, to make things lighter and therefore more effective in other means, so we're really trying to address all these big picture issues with our specific technical expertise and questions that we're trying to pursue. Congratulations to the 2014 recipients of the Edith and Peter O'Donnell Awards.